everyone. I'm really excited today to be having Maria with us today. Uh, she's an expert in mental health. And, um, you know, with mental health now considered a disability, a huge topic in the world of wellness, uh, in our society, something we're, we're ready to be more aware of, having more discussions. Maria, welcome. Thank you for being our Wonder Thank Woman you. of the Month for Avanti Women. And uh, I would love for you to just maybe uh, give us some background to your credentials, who you are. Uh, it really kind of sets the stage to, you know, why you were selected for um, this topic because of your expertise and, and the work that you're doing today in mental health. So, so welcome and, and give us a little bit of your background. And I have some uh, questions for you and look forward to hearing more about this topic. So over to you, my friend. Thank you, Dina. Thank you for having me. And um, this is a privilege and honor. Um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to, to um, express some of my or share some of my experience and hopefully some knowledge uh, with other women like-minded or not. Um, so Excellent. my background is I'm a, I'm a certified Canadian counselor. Um, I'm a graduate from UBC. Um, I'm a career changer. The first half of my life I was a business person and then I turned into uh, the social services field where mental health has been uh, my focus. I'm a mental health advocate. Um, currently, I'm working uh, at an agency where we assist uh, ladies who are or have experienced um, domestic violence. So right now, I run the programs at that agency. I'm the program supervisor. And that combines the best of my life experiences and my um, academic background, which is the ability to manage a whole venue where we can provide mental health and uh, trauma uh, support services for this population. Wow. Well, Maria, thank you for that. Um, great credentials. And, you know, my hat goes off to you that uh, you do such great work in our community. So, so thank you for that. Um, and I hope that you do get rewards and appreciation from others as well on this. Um, so, you know, when you think about mental health, let's start with uh, a definition. You know, how, how, how do we define mental health today in Canada? Um, defining mental health, and that's precisely the, the issue, that we are trying to separate mental health from health, right? And health is just a holistic um, definition that involves mental, physical, emotional, spiritual health, right? So the reason why we have to set mental health apart is because the big stigma that is um, around that. People right. tend to, you say, I have diabetes, I have a heart condition, and it's socially accepted. That's fine, oh, why are you taking, who are you seeing? And that's fine, I take a leave at work because I have to take a, an insulin shot or special for this week, I don't know, something like that. It's totally understandable. Mm -hmm. But you just say, I have a mental health issue, and then, many flags raised around you when it shouldn't be the case. So mental health is just yeah. another aspect of health, but it became so relevant nowadays because it's highly stigmatized. Yeah, interesting. So what would you say is some of the trends happening in mental health in a, in a positive way? Like what are employers doing? What is our you know, communities doing? What are the mental health associations, all the different community? What's happening that's good for us and, and something that we need to know as, as women so we can support others? Yeah, um, I, I believe that uh, partnerships are starting to actually work, merging efforts, resources, outsourcing. Um, the mental health system is, um, if you want to um, equate it to something, um, think about uh, multiple subway lines, all intertwined, interconnected, going different places. So the mental health system is very difficult to navigate. 
So what is happening nowadays is that those connections and knowing where this agency is, knowing what that resource is, knowing where that position is, knowing what, where that women support group that works with traumatized populations is, that information is making more sense to the person that is going through the struggle. Because usually in the past, what has happened is that the first entrance into the mental health system is through prisons, jail, right? Through the criminal justice mm. system. So what's happening nowadays interesting, interesting. is that professionals in the field are more equipped to know where all these resources connect so they can refer out to the person to the appropriate resource before things deteriorate in such a way that become out of hand. Does that make sense? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, what, what can women do to be more preventative? What, what can we do for ourselves? You know, we work, we have jobs, we've got responsibilities around the house, we've got kids, we've got pets. We got our aging parents. Like, what can we do as women to help ourselves? Let's talk about that self love, that self care. And that has, like, the answer to that, I, I would say, has to do with the previous question you asked me. It's a peer support. If anything in mental health has right. been demonstrated more and more by studies and by other uh, experience, empirical um, data, that the peer support has such a powerful element that it's healing by itself. Okay, so basically, so women supporting women. That's w w what I, I'd say is the most salient thing uh, at this point, where we can find um, a venue where we can vent out, process feelings, find friendships, social support, understanding and validation about our own journeys. As you were saying, it is about uh, taking care of three kids, two pets, uh, single mom, not single mom, uh, not to mention transgender issues, uh, racism. Uh, there's so many contexts per yeah. person and everybody's unique. But those intersectionalities where we both share a burden, uh, we are both single parents, we are both women uh, who experience trauma. So when we find a space, an environment that we can trust, that is safe, where we can share our experiences, where we can share our emotions, uh, that's, that's gold. So I would say peer support yeah. is the, the answer to your question. Love it. Thank you so much. That's, that's great. And, and so, you know, resources, you know, what kind of resources are available out there? What do you recommend in terms of your favorite book or blog that you recommend? You know, you, you're the go-to expert for mental health, Maria. So, so, you know, tell the world what it is we need to be looking at or going to for, for more information and for resources. You know what? I, I, the, my mind goes to two things. The first thing goes to, I, I have, um, I have experience uh, working at KMH for a while while I was doing my practicum there. Um, and I realized that uh, they have excellent resources to educate yourself. So there's Mental Health 101, there's uh, Social determinants, determinants of Health, there's a whole team that support individuals. But I'm not talking about so much about going there for specific purposes, but it is the one-on-one -on -one mental health resource. So that educates not you, you are the one who's experiencing what you're experiencing. So you know what you're feeling, you know what you're going through, but people around you don't. Right. So um, in my mind yeah. of education, yeah. how can you give a person in a nutshell, what is it about depression? What is it about anxiety? So KMH has an excellent portal for that. Um, there's other resources, uh, but basically um, I would say that in terms of reading books and um, there's a whole variety out there. Um, I would say if you're going to Google anything, whatever you do, you will find many resources out there, but ensure that the article that you're reading or the book that you're looking for is actually um, an evidence-based, peer-reviewed article. So it's um, .org, yeah, .org, or it is a um, 
uh, yeah, something that is credible because there's a lot of also because mental health is the flavor of the month. There's a lot of uh, recommendations in, in, in information out there that honestly it is not well backed up uh, in terms of research, right, right. in terms of credibility. So whatever you do, make sure right. that uh, it is a reliable source of information that is credible and peer reviewed. Okay, great. Well, thank you. This is great. And, and um, you know, do you have a favorite superhero, uh, you know, something that gets you through this that, you know, bring in some fun here? Do you have one? Or many? <laughs> I, I was hoping that you asked that question. So be prepared to an answer. Um, okay. I don't believe in superheroes. Okay, yes. how come? Uh-huh. Now, I don't know. I know that we are in this conference right now and you are in your place, I'm in mine, but if you had somebody next to you, anybody, a woman, friend, your neighbor, you turn to that person, that's your superhero. For me, my favorite superhero is the next person I'm going to talk when I leave this conversation especially if it's a woman, because nice. we tend to think that to be a superhero, you have to have special superpowers and look up to this person. And I agree with that. Don't get me wrong. That's very inspirational. That's extremely inspirational. However, when you look at the next woman crossing the street that maybe is going through depression, and had a very extremely hard time to wake up today at 8 a.m. so she can go grocery shopping for her family. And she cannot wake up because depression doesn't allow her to wake up early. But she was able to do it, pushed through, and is a mother to her children or uh, breadwinner for her family. For me, that's a superhero. You don't have to right. uh, fly or have X-ray vision to be a superhero. You just have to overcome your own challenges right. daily basis. And that makes you a superhero. Yeah. So I admire every woman, every woman, sorry, that I meet next. That being Wonderful. said, I do have a superhero. <laughs> I do have somebody that I, I, I'm a sci-fi fan. Uh, so Doctor Who, recently it's a woman, by the way, but I love uh, Doctor okay. Who because it gathers some qualities that resonate with me, except, um, eccentric, Excellent. intelligent, yeah. compassionate, and timeless, Excellent. ageless, genderless. So, yeah. Okay. Yes, I see. Wow. This is great. So, you know, as we wrap up our Wonder Woman of the Month, I have a few questions or sentences that I'm going to ask you to complete. Uh, so life is. Life is a journey worth writing a book about. Wonderful. And love is. An understatement. It is a misused word that should be sacred and used accordingly. Um, okay. And love is the hope. The world needs. Oh, I apologize. The world sorry. needs. Oh, sorry. Love is uh, kindness and, and compassion um, and hope. Um, the world needs more open minds. Why? Because we tend mm. to be flexible and adaptable because we know we have to, or there's no other choice. And then that takes a toll in your mental health, in, in your stress levels. But if you're open-minded, flexibility and adapt adaptability become a consequence, a natural consequence of being open-minded. So I think uh, the world mm. needs more open-minded individuals. Okay. And what do you want your legacy to be? Joy. Hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. I well, Maria, that. I want to th thank you. 
I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, you've been amazing. Uh, I really appreciate hearing your uh, expertise, your thought process around mental health, uh, some of your um, advice as well. I think that this is going to be something very valuable for our members. And I just really appreciate your time. So, so thank you for being our Wonder Woman and uh, stay tuned for more information. Thank you, Dina. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.